So this video is about how to choose the right graphs or what are all the options for using graphs and um, charts when you are um, putting together a presentation. So um, I'm going to go through a whole bunch of different types of graphs and then I'm going to look at particularly how you might make your graph um, easier to see and understand to the audience. So here's a list of all the different types of graphs, well not all of them, but many different kinds of graphs that are used in um, data, in, in explaining data when you're telling a story. This is an example of using simple text. So the number 19 is shown because it's super important for the data that, the data that you're um, the point you're making with the story. So when you look at that, you say this is the very most important number. Now, of course, the audience and everybody who's looking at it needs to have some context associated with that. But if they do and the number is so important, then just putting the one number as a simple text would be um, effective. The next thing is a scatter plot. So a scatter plot shows the relationship between two variables. So the y-axis and the x-axis. And it's just a bunch of data that says when this happens, this happens. So some sort of relationship, correlation, cause and effect that you might want to illustrate, then a scatter plot is important is a good option. A table, if especially if this a person in uh, the audience is used to seeing a table in a certain way, in a certain order, that is, is quite effective for having a bunch of detailed data associated with it. Now it's not good if you want to make a particular point about some particular item on this data, but if it's something that people are um, used to looking at, then a table is an option. Another option is a line graph. So this will show sort of often is um, used over time so that you can see people usually lead, read from left to right. So you can see that this line graph shows an increasing trend. So if that's what you're trying to show, then a line graph is useful. Another interesting item is a heat map. So a heat map, actually you can create heat maps pretty easily in Excel and you might want to look at a video on how to do that. But it's a way of sort of showing different um, area, different sizes of data. So like the biggest number will be a certain size and the smallest number certain color and the smallest number will be a different color. So looking at a heat map is a way of focusing on a table of information. Another option is a slope graph. Now a slope graph is a little bit hard to read when you're putting two sense pieces of data together and showing the relationship between them. So I, I would say that that's a little bit hard to um, use, but again, if there's particular, like this one, the, the difference in the US data is stark because it's at a quite a different slope from the other data. Um, a really common thing is a vertical bar chart. So this is over time, but it also could be over categories. Um, you also have different categories. You can have multiple categories. So you have the time, the dolphins and the whales, and then the population. So this is a good way of showing multiple dimensions, not just two, but in this case, three. Um, another one is a horizontal bar chart. Um, I think that most people use this to indicate sort of progress because people often read again from left to right. So this shows some progress associated with some of the items that you that you want to monitor, um, but it's just another option. A stacked bar chart is another way of sort of showing categories within a total. So in this case, it looks like they have the different people and what they've read, and then it looks at the difference between fiction and nonfiction. So the total stack is important, and then the categorization between, within the stack is also important. So if this is what you're concerned about, this might be important too. Now, a uh, uh, horizontal, a stacked, hor stacked horizontal bar chart is one that's shown here. And this is actually used quite a bit in survey, representing survey data. So you can see how many people sort of agree or disagree. And you can have the line at the middle that indicates this is a neutral point. Um, and this is sometimes used, this horizontal bar chart. And I think it's quite effective for survey data. In this case, um, they have a sort of a continuum of five categories where uh, 
pants on fire lie, false, mostly false, half true, mostly true and true. So this idea that um, you have this sort of continuum that indicates on the, um, on the horizontal bar chart. Another chart is a um, waterfall chart. So in a waterfall chart, what you're really, in this case, you're describing the difference between two points on the data. So in this case, the initial value of 4,000 is explained by both these positive numbers, which is the blue, and negative numbers, which is the red, to get to the ending value, which is um, the another value. So in this case, it's a reconciliation between the start of the year and the end of the year. But you can reconcile any kind of items that you compare moment to moment. Another thing is um, a, a square area where you can indicate what is the relative area associated with particular data. So this is a visual way of seeing sort of relative amounts of data. So an another thing I want to show you about is using a non-zero baseline. So in this case we look at the um, the tax cuts were explained by putting now and then uh, January 1st, 2013. So if Bush um, tax cuts were to expire, the idea is the tax rates are going to go up. Now, if you just glance at this chart, it looks like it's going up a lot. It looks like it's going up like four, five, six fold. But if you, that's because you're using the, the, the zero line is actually 34%, so it goes from 34 to 42%. And this is a little bit misleading because if you use a zero value, which is the one on the right here, it's going from 35 to 39.6. So it's not that much of an increase, although the one on the left looks like it's quite a bit of an increase. So you need to be careful, and most people agree that you should use a zero baseline when you're comparing things, otherwise you're skewing the way that somebody's seeing that. Now we're gonna go through a, um, uh, an exercise of kind of making the chart look better. So this is a chart of ticket volume received and ticket volumes processed over time. So we're going to look at this and see is there ways that we can make this look better. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take all out the grid lines just because we don't need that extra piece of information on there. And so it's a little bit clearer, cleaner to look at that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is take out the um, marks of the data points because it's not really the particular data points and it also makes it a little bit more crowded looking. So I'm going to take those off. The next thing I'm going to do is shorten the abbreviations for the um, months. So again, it's just easier to read because people have a little bit of a hard time reading at an angle. And then instead of having the, um, the legends there on the bottom, I'm going to actually put the legend, the number, the values of, of the lines or the names of the lines next to them. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use color to code it. So I'm going to have the blue is received and the red is processed. And that's just a little bit cleaner chart and it looks a little bit easier to read. I'm sure you can see that. So that's just an example of how you might go through and be very careful and um, and conscientious about which charts you're using, how you're doing the grid or the, um, the scale, and then how you actually produce a chart that's easy to read.